This is Jimmy. Nuclear launch detected. Right on. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Talk about Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Today it's going to be a TVZ, an, a DEFCON 1 level 1, sent to me by RJB of RJB TV fame. Here on Retro, top left, it's going to be our Terran player. It is Tengu. And in the bottom left, it is Larva. So our Blue Zerg versus our Red Terran today. Tengu is on a list of 10 players, 10 Terrans, that uh, RJB says are about to break into the pro level. Players like Tengu, Noel, Fake Flash, Hani. Remember Hani from the Snow Scout game? If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask me for a link. I read every comment. I will link it to you. No questions asked. And he qualified for ASL back in February. So, Tengu here, ready to show off what he can do here against Larva, the established and very, very well-known Zerg player here on Retro today. Should be excellent, should be good, wonderful stuff. I've been watching ASL, watch groups A and B as cast by Tastosis, put on the YouTube channel for Afrika Sports, and it's good, man. It's good to have Tastosis around. It's good to hear them talk about the games and the matchups and see all that they do. And one game that I was really entertained by was Zealot versus Light. So Light's definitely the better player. The problem with Zealot is got some really strong aggressive plays but that's all he ever does is really strong aggressive plays like off of two bases so you know what to expect from him and therefore it's a lot easier to deal with than if you don't expect it right so he went for a crazy lurker opening against light and light just bunkered up hard man he went five bunkers at his choke here and the lurker showed up and they were like oh five bunkers huh <laughs> i guess we're not breaking that and they didn't. Uh, he just makes me laugh. He does. Hat first in it. Here is a larva walling off against potentially early, early pool stuff here on Retro. Is Tengu. As you'd want to do against Larva. Larva can be pretty darn aggressive. Really, really fun player, though, without a doubt. So Extractor coming in. We are scouting with drones. We are scouting with the SCVs. They're not finding anything, but hey, this SCV is found Terry the Overlord. What's up, Terry? Yes, Terry, I know. You just got spotted. That's okay. It's not your fault. Tango just did a good job looking for Overlord pathing. See where the Zerg is. And yeah, that Overlord cannot be here unless the Zerg is here. That's it. That's the logic involved here. No, no crazy complex math involved whatsoever. That's just all there is to it. All there be to it, lads. So comes in, sees the extractor, sees the pool. Says it's not some crazy three hatch before pool play. Overlord survives by getting out over the water. Oh yes, cool yourself off a little, Terry here. Enjoy the underwater flowers growing down there. So 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 nice and expanding. So he says, yeah, you know what? I don't need two racks. I don't need a bunker. This is not crazy early ling pressure. Let's expand. We've got the time for it. Make a couple marines get behind this wall and all as well. SCB also wants to know how many lings are being produced, and is there a lair? Yes, there is. A lair is on the way. Then metabolic boost, because that's what Zerg players have been doing in the current meta for a gosh darn long time. So this is more of a recent replay, because Tengu, again, kind of a newcomer to the amateur StarCraft scene, and good micro. There we go. Good micro from Tengu. Maybe lost a marine, one more marine there than he should have, but... I'm not going to complain about it. You're not going to try to bunker this. It's like the latest bunkering of all time. There's already lings out, dude. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Maybe looking for another overlord to kill, but look at the overlord. I'm... Nope. Can't shoot me when I'm this deep over the water. Good luck, guys. And the marines fall back. So I like this from Tengu. I like it a lot. He's not just going to sit here and wait for Larva to come try and kill him. He's going to move out. He's going to try to get some stuff done. And if we know Larva, he's also not going to sit back and wait for the Terran to kill him. He's going to move out and get stuff done, too. Spire on the way from the Zerg. We know how this works. We know how this opening works. We see it a lot. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you can slip in there, but you're taking a million shots from Goss Rivals the whole time. A little bit sloppy, I would say, from Larva. SCV comes in, sees the timing on the Spire, says, mm hmm mm hmm Engineering Bay, eh, maybe in the next minute or so. Oh no, we're going for plus one attack. We already have the Engineering Bay. I like it. This SCD is going to die. But 
He's getting some really good information. This is some dead impressive stuff. Alright, SCV down. But, got the information that he needed, and that's all that really matters. Barracks, barracks. So, we are not trying to go mech here early. No vultures, no need for a sunken at this point in the game. This is just simply, we're going to start building some turrets now. Because guess what's in the production tab? Mutalisks! And a plus one flyer attack commitment. Here from Larva. That means he believes. He believes in these mutas. He knows what they're going to do. And turrets, there we go. Four turrets on the way. Kind of hard to see on the screen. They're coming up. Eventually, you kind of want to float a barracks up here so the mutas can't hide in this fog of war. Scans in, sees the spires, doesn't see a queen's nest or anything, and here come a couple mutas. Oh, look at that turret timing. Oh my gosh, that turret timing was sick. That turret timing is so good. Range upgrade for Marines coming in. That plus one attack is early, though. So he wants the Marines to hit hard more than he wants them to have the range. Mutas, not a ton of them, but we're getting plus one flyer attack. Of course there's going to be a bunch of Mutas. Four more on the way. Medics being added into the mix here. And a third base coming up. Not defended by Lurkers, but defended instead by Mutalisks. As you do. If you're going plus one mutas in this stage of the game, because you don't have the gas to go for lurkers if you're continually pumping mutas out. He's not continually pumping mutas out. He's got, I guess it was maybe a little bit. He's going to go for more. Yep, three more mutas. There we go. There it is. All right. Tengu says it's time. Time to move out. And our range upgrade is done. Our plus one attack is finishing up. Here come the mutas. Dive bomb upon dive bomb upon us like our worst nightmares. Ugh. Oh, bad rally. Okay, you know what? If you want to give Tengu some kind of a handicap advantage there by donating him the mutalisk, I'm not gonna say no. These mutas, they don't have their plus one attack yet, but in the hands of an elite Zerg player. This is what happens to you if you try to move out. Is that a distraction, though? <gasps> oh my gosh. How many games have I cast in my life where the Zerg player loses their third base in a TVZ and GG's out? Because that's what this is. The mutas are desperately coming to the third base. Can they save it? Yes, they can absolutely save it. This is so many mutas. Okay, that was fine. <laughs> I was more worried about that than I think Larva was. Man, look at these little groups, though. Serious. Okay, supply blocking Larva is not a bad way to do things either. There's nothing defending this natural base. It's again, not quite enough to take down this hatchery. Because the mutas are on their way, ready for them to show up on stage right. Oh my gosh, they're not here yet. Guys, guys, two, one, and the plus one mutos ravage everything. Good job, guys. So, <laughs> no drones have died. It's 37 to 28 workers in favor of the Terran. He successfully mounted two attacks on the third base and on the natural base. Did not kill either of them. I don't kill, think kill a single drone, and these mutos are just rampaging. Lurker aspects on the way, right? No lurkers to defend the third base early, but there will be lurkers later on. And our guy with the four racks is like, okay, well, time to get some science vessels. Time to get more barracks. Time to get a science facility for those vessels. Turret count, marine count, turret, uh, muta count. Not quite actually as big as I wanted it to be, but you know. He got the plus one flyer. I mean, he's made a bunch. The thing is, just he's just lost a bunch, too. Is the larger problem here. Boom. 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 
Queen's Nest. We already talked about that one. Another Scanner Rooney into the natural base to see if there's anything defending it against a potential drop, maybe? I don't know. Hive on the way, about 50% or 50 complete here. Evolution Chamber coming in to Muta's Sharken. Once again, this is not a group of 11, but there are two more on the way. Just historically, if you're going to get plus one attack for your Mutas, at some point, you just want to have an 11 group out there at all times, you know? These Lings making sure nobody sneaks down that right side without the express knowledge of the Mutalisks. Radiates coming in, Science Vessels on the way. This is SK Terran, and this is our guy, Tangu, trying to SK Terran Larva. I don't know. What do I always say about SK Terran? It's better early than it is later. Once the Zerg has all of their tools, once they're in their bag, once they have Dark Swarm, once they have Plague, it's insanely difficult. Insanely difficult for a Terran player using SK Terran to defeat a Zerg. We've seen it done. Flash makes it look easier than it is. And look, there are lurkers at the top of this ramp. No, it's not bustable unless you have siege tanks, unless you have science vessels, which is not happening, guys. The filer mound is on the way. Another scan says, Sunkins and lurkers and scourge defending that natural base, which is still bleeding, but at 260 HP now. So it's been recovering its HP all the time here. Third base, 12 o'clock in it. Consume. Adrenal. <laughs> Marine, stimming. One, one upgrades on those guys. These guys are just, you know, no fourth base for you while I get a third base as a win for me. It's going to hang out here until our science vessels show up. Radiate time. No. Radiate time? Yes. Split. Okay. Fine. Not the worst split of all time. It's Larva. He's not going to botch that, I don't think, pretty much ever. Titan Reactor on the way. Did I mention this is a DEFCON 1 replay from RJB? He's very excited about it. He had me put it in the DEFCON 1 list immediately. So, I just assume it's a great game. That's it. Great game here from Tangu. Just a good showing. At the very least here against Larva. SK Terraning it, no less. Scourge taking out a Science Vessel, a Radiate. Mutas. Ooh, okay, a couple Mutas died there unnecessarily a bit. Science Vessels do not take hits on the right side here, so that's good. But now the trick is, getting these Science Vessels down here is very tricky. Also, there are already four Lurkers at the top of this ramp, and irradiating all of them would require multiple Science Vessels or a lot of energy on two Science Vessels. Tough. Tough ask at this stage of the game. Further upgrades coming in from both players. Melee attack is on the way from Larva, which tells me he's considering getting an Ultralisk Cavern at some point here, or just making sure that his Adrenalings aren't embarrassing. There we go. Dark Swarm Lurkers moving down, slowly setting up shop so that a fourth base can come in from Larva. Here on Retro. Science Vessels come in, but no Radiates go down on that Defiler. Come on, Tengu. There it is. Radiate, Radiate on a Lurker. Oh, Dark Storm placement. Too good to jump on that, Tengu. There you go. Good reaction time getting on out. Defiler dies. Dark Storm lasts for a while. Is always the problem here. Oh, look at these Marines hiding down here. Oh, Science Vessel down. A little bit sloppy, but even the best Terran players lose Science Vessels to somebody like Larva. Okay. These guys, they thought they were so sneaky. Very dead. Another Dark Swarm move up. Fire Bats inside the Dark Swarm, though. Ooh, where did all these Fire Bats come from? Tengu busting out Fire Bats when I was not paying attention. Defiler dies. This fourth base is forfeit. That's a cancel or a kill. And that's a cancel. Getting up the ramp. Lurkers burrowing on in. One lurker dies. Another lurker dies. Look at these fire bats. Another lurker dies. Focus the lurker. Ah, oh, the lurkers are dead. Busting up the ramp. There is a Nidus up here. Reinforcements. There you go. Cracklings busting out here to save this base. The fire bats at 14 minutes were sick. Tengu not able to bust up there, but forcing a cancel on the fourth base of Larva was killer was really, really good stuff. 
Well, the problem with fire bats is they don't shoot up. Goodbye, science vessels. Goodbye, both of you, probably. And all those medics went down, too. And, yep, science vessel down in exchange for a couple marines, I guess. Still, Larva's on three bases at 15 minutes. Not where he would like to be. Oh, it's three battle cruisers. Tango! Tango! I, mm, sir. Sir, we have a battle cruiser curse on this channel. We have had players defeated in the past. It is not a 100% win rate for Zergs against battle cruisers. But it is not a good win rate for uh, Terrans against Zergs when Terrans use BCs. Quite possibly, could you be the guy to do it? Maybe. Maybe we need to believe in Tengu here today. Okay, but maybe he keeps rallying Marines into Lurkers. We should not believe in Tengu as much, you know? Don't channel. Those are, uh, you know, 1-1 one, one Adrenalings. I'm going to trade out too poorly here. Firebat support, really important on that one. Tengu just got small little groups running around. He's like, all right, well, this fourth base is probably coming up at this point. This is really entrenched. Dropship's on the way. So the last game that I cast featuring battle cruisers, some battle cruisers wandered into like the third base of some Zerg player, took out a ton of like absorbed a ton of scourge hits and then basically died. And I was like, okay, they didn't do anything. But then a drop came in after it and the drop was awesome. So people in the comments very rightly pointed out that the battle cruisers absorbed scourge that would otherwise have killed the drop ships and allowed the drop to succeed. So you know what? Falcon gives that analysis two thumbs up. You guys are smart. They did more. They did more. Then just die. And here, oh, is that a plague sound? That was a big plague sound. Battle cruiser. Two hydras chasing these battle cruisers away. Overlord down, not supply blocking. Dude, seriously. Two hydras. Hydras are fine against BCs. Not this good. How are we doing, plagued fellows? Oh, not plagued. These guys get replagued or what? No, okay. Look at him. He kept the medevacs on the move. Oh, all three battle cruisers got plagued. They were even spread out. How did that happen? Okay. Oh, oh, look out. Ow, ow. Well, one BC went down to a combination of getting plagued and scourge, shooting it in the face. This is forcing Larva to go into Hydras, is what this is doing on some level, anyway. Battle, okay, so these BCs are effectively dead. They know it. But look, they are distracting stuff. Distracting the Zerg from this ginormous drop unloading. Here inside the main base, they might deny upgrades. Oh, that plus two. I think they just denied a plus a melee attack upgrade. The hive taking shots. The defiler mound goes down with these three two marines. Where are these zerglings at? Here they are. Yeah, I think that was plus two, and the spawning pool goes down. This drops, what does Falcon always say about drops and how good they are? They're super good, says Falcon Paladin. Quite often, actually. Man, that's a 10 kill lurker. Not bad, this guy escapes. Ooh, the Ultralisks are out. Okay, so, Ultras are here, they've got the armor, they only have the plus one attack because that plus two melee got denied and is now restarted. Science Vessels try to join this party. One of them goes down to Scourge, radiating the Ultras, but there's nothing to support these guys. They went on a, okay, a bit of a solo mission. I don't know what's even happening here. Tengu is continuing to crush in here like he owns the joint. Nidus Canal down, Ultra inside the Dark Swarm. Guys, you gotta be shooting buildings or stuff outside the Dark Swarm at this point. Overlord's dying, Ultralisk Cavern dying would be pretty nice. Gotta admit, Lurkers joining this party in Ultralisk falls. Yep, okay. Uh, Tengu not paying too much attention to what's going on down here. But he's up 150 to 112 supply. He's been macroing a ton back home. He's got a fourth base coming up in the top right-hand corner. 
And uh, Lurkers clear this out, because what else are you going to do against an SK Terran player other than Lurkers? I guess it's not technically SK Terran anymore, because we're adding Battlecruisers into the mix. Besides, vessels wander in, irradiate all the stuff that killed all of their stuff earlier. La 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 la. Goodbye. We'll be back later, probably. Let's do the drops today. <gasps> he killed the Nidus Canal on the other side of the map, so this drop is 80% more effective. Overlord down. Larva knows about this, but what can he do about it? He can set up some lurkers. The Defiler does gets a plague off. Doesn't get a dark swarm off, but it's a really nice plague, nevertheless. Overlords are dying. No supply block here on Larva again, but the plague is massive. These lings, are, I think, are rallying to their death. They're taking a bunch of Marines with them, though. On the other side, Tengu is back at the natural. Ultralis holding court here. Drones are fighting. That's how desperate the situation is right now. Is Larva a dead man? Battle cruisers have joined this party. Irradiated Ultralis goes down. Nothing can shoot up here. There are no Scourge. There are no Defilers. On the other side, this group... Continuing to just kind of hang out and then get dragged into Lurkers and die. Yeah, Tengu not quite able to control millions of places at the same time. To be fair, nobody's really that good at it. Again, being big, big swings against Ultras, not bad. The thing is, the Ultras are fast and they don't have to stick around and wait for you BCs to hit them. Right? They run away. They go somewhere else and then they catch and irradiate and bad things happen there too. Really surprised that Tengu has not focused down this Ultralist Cavern yet. I'm staring at it. Okay, Ultralist Cavern went down, everyone. It's okay. We did it, Reddit. Ultras, battle cruisers in the house. Everybody on the ground is dying. There's the Dark Swarm. Battle cruisers wasting their attacks on stuff. They have Yamato. I'm gonna guess they have Yamato. Okay, again, Tengu not really paying attention to what's going on at a particular part of the map. I understand he's trying to do 20 things at once right now. Okay, killed the Defiler. That's pretty good. Radiated another Defiler. Also pretty good. This Marine is still back here, by the way. I bet he could wander into this mineral line and get a few kills before he went down. I really do. Battlecruiser, six kills. Battlecruiser, six kills. I mean, catching a plague, all part of the job here. Not much else you can do about it. Science Vessel's up, and... Okay, so... Hmm. Larva managed to expand to the 6 o'clock base while all this chaos was happening. Which is just, okay. Really impressive stuff, guy. Vehicle weapons and siege tanks being added in from Tengu. So he is transitioning a little bit. She just wants some tanks to deal with these Ultras. They're much better at it. Humongous play catching every single Science Vessel out on the map right now. And that Scourge is problematic. The Hydras are also very problematic on these very plagued science vessels. See you later, guys. This Marine, seriously, I think he forgot that he had it. Yeah, the thing about BCs is they, you know, they will kill stuff on the ground, but will we kill it fast enough to where it doesn't murderize every one of my guys? So, Marvel was down about 50 supply a minute ago. He's now down only about 25 or 30 supply. Going good. This third base is in a lot of trouble for Tengu. In fact, might just straight up go down. Yeah, all these SCPs are probably dead. That's a lift on the command center if ever I saw one. This group. Larva's ability to be like, there are Marines here. That's what this Overlord is for, by the way, is good. Drone transfer, a bit of an active war zone, but lurkers are ensuring it's a safe transfer down to this base. Battle cruisers are back. This one's got full HP again. Maybe he never lost it. I don't know. And two shot drones with no attack upgrades whatsoever. Oh, no way. He's, gonna, he's not going to finish off this hatch. This hatch that has worked so hard to get back up to like 500 HP. Tengu pressuring down this fourth base of Larva again, but no. An ultra hydra lurker combo is just not for Marines. I'm sorry. This is enough hydras. Focus the wounded one. Focus the wounded one. Focus the plagued one. Okay, somehow the plagued one made it out of there, and the other one didn't die either. But the hatch got taken down. So Larva loses his natural. Kind of feel like Tengu has lost steam a bit. Nice plague again. Look, it's Larva we're talking about here. Is he going to whiff on plagues? Maybe sometimes. But not a lot. Okay. All right. Unplagued battle cruiser versus this many hydras with no attack upgrades. Actually survives. But not anymore. There's nowhere to hide, really. Uh, this third base is on fire. Got saved by... 
I don't know what. There was too much going on otherwise. I assume something good happened for Tengu to keep that thing alive. More science vessels are here. Did he repair them? He might have repaired some of these science vessels. Gotta love a good repair, man. Everybody does. Oh, oh, this guy. This No, he's attacking a hatchery. I guess the drones are gone. We might as well attack a macro hatch. Why not? Okay, Hydra's alone. Not gonna stand against this many Marines with medic support, cost for cost. The plague is just so much. There's just so much plague here. This Marine is interested in doing more stuff, and that is getting murdered by cracklings. All right, science vessels wander on in. They don't get any radiates off on these guys. Another battle cruiser dies because he has two HP. This BC is also dead. Unless the Hydras do not see him. And they didn't, but oh my gosh, the Science Vessel Massacre of 2024. Sort of what that was. All right, so look, Tengu's been pressuring hard today, which is much appreciated. Ow, 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 ow. Oh my gosh. Mm, okay, we're getting Hydralisk upgrade attack because, well, these battle cruisers are annoying and plus zero attack hiders don't kill them very quickly. Unless they've been plagued. All right, man. Has Larvid has completely taken over this game? I think he has. I think he's completely taken over this game. He's at 54 drones. There's 42 SCVs remaining. I'm trying to get... Okay. He's taking big time shots from this battle cruiser group is bad news. Ultra down, second ultra, not as down, and now there's Dark Swarm. This 12 o'clock base is looking tough. Looking insanely tough here today. Command center forced to lift off again. Leg science vessels are irradiating. I'm guessing the defi- what did we irradiate, guys? Don't know. Siege tank, plus one attack, bam, dead. Ultra's crushing that. Drop! Aborted drop down here. Yeah, where have the drops gone? Where do you want to send this battle cruiser? Somewhere good, I guess. Tengu, can you make it happen? Boxer maneuvering or eraser maneuver, whatever you want to call it. Triple SCV, triple science vessel. They all died, but they took what? Something like 10 SCVs with them. It's 42 drones, drones, 41 SCVs. Holy smokes. And they took down this right side hatch while all that was happening too. So Tengu multitasking like an absolute boss today. This game has been, yeah, this is DEFCON 1 level TVZ. I cannot believe how good this game has been. Yeah, these ultras are effectively vulnerable with their six armor. They're just negating so much of these Marines attacks. Wings running into a situation where there are high ground siege tanks with plus one. Hey, no guys, this is not for you. Yeah, see, good. I love it, incorporating siege tanks. Good stuff. What was left of the drop unloads and Larva's trying to replace these drones, but guess who's here to wipe you out? These drones with armor. Surprisingly hard to kill. Like really, really, really strong little guys with free armor. Hydralisk Den going down would totally suck. Tengu made a pretty solid habit out of wiping out important tech structures. Oh my gosh. No, oh, he didn't. The last Marine got it. Spawning pools died today. Defiler Mount has died today and come back. Left side base of Larva is up. The right side base didn't work out. Left side is going to be the replacement here. Third base is back from Tengu. He is also taking the right top right side natural location. But he's down in supply. It is 164 to 134 supply in favor of Larva. He's up. He's up 61 to 43 workers. Yes, he lost some workers, but he replaced them because he's a boss. And his macro is super good. Okay, earlier radiates on these ultralisks. Some lings coming to try to support it. Ultras come down the ramp. Siege tanks, big single target hits. Okay, irradiate plus siege tank. Combination for great success. Oh yeah, eight kill siege tank, eight kill siege tank. We wanna come from those high ground positions though, and I think they did. Tengu just trying to do what he can with the units he's got here. 
Nobody's maxed out. I love this. Wow, this march from Tangu is hilarious. These lurkers are trying to get in position to do something about it. Oh, good Dark Swarm, though. And then he's like, oh, so if your lurkers abandon this position, I get his march down here and wipe this out. Yeah, sure, maybe we'll all die. Dude, these low ground siege tanks, though, against these Hydras. This is why you make tanks when your enemy goes Hydras. I guess they've got a uh, plus one attack now. They do not have plus one attack. Well, the six o'clock base goes down. And by that, I mean it does go down. All right, making drones inside of a war zone seems a little bit ambitious, Larva. Hatch down. Yeah, this is, yep. I'm epic tagging, Defcon wanting this thing. This is a crazy good ZVT. I know you, some of you people are gonna see the name and say, who's Tengu? I'm not watching this. Look at this single Ultralisk coming up to the 12 o'clock third base of Tengu. <laughs> the one Ultralisk base harass. You gotta love that more than anything else here. God. Blah. I say. This is just a tiny little. This is two Marines. Okay, like three Marines and five medics. Come on, heal him up. Heal, no, not enough to heal him up, but he wins anyway. Tengu trying to get a high ground position over here at the 9 o'clock. Hatch. Dude, that Defiler just died without doing anything at all. Lurker down. There are four Ultralisks defending this base, though. So quick, low ground siege tanks. Radiate the Ultras. Lings on the surround here. Yeah, I think this group is wiped out, especially with the Dark Swarm. There's still dudes. No. This does get wiped out eventually. A well, spawning pool dying again would have been hilarious. Larva has not replaced the 6 o'clock base. The third base at 12 o'clock from Tengu is forced to be lifted off for, I want to say, the fourth time today. Something like that. But it's 102 to 122 supply in favor of Larva. He is not having a good time against Tengu here today, and nor should he be. No one would expect him to feel that way. Ultralisks and Ling's symbiotic relationship to the max here. <laughs> 32 minutes on the offensive. Some Ling's roll up. Not as effective as that Ultralisk was, but also there's an Ultralisk here in all fairness. Have two shotting these links because no, it, we are not spending any resources giving these battle cruisers attack or armor upgrades, and I'm pretty sure they don't have Yamato. Because we would have heard of Yamato by now. Tengu really wants this nine o'clock. He knows what it is, but then the dark swarm comes in, and then the links swing around from the backside, and it's not looking particularly hot for Tengu. Yeah, man, cracklings. So, so cost efficient. Ultraling Scourge. Hydralisk. Here from Larva. Base is not dead. Base replanted for Larva at the 6 o'clock. Another scan. Just seeing what we're dealing with down here. It's not a lot. But the problem is. Yeah. Ultra's on the other side. High ground siege tanks. Okay. Big swings off. Quick body the ramp so the Ultras can't jump on top of the siege tanks. Okay, well, the Ultras died. I guess these Siege Tanks died, but they did their job. Oh, it's a drop. Tengu wins the award for most effective drops in a game I've cast in 2024 so far. He is the leader for the award for the entire year. This is crazy. Does he want to focus the hatch? Does he want to get these? This is a lot of links, but there are a couple of medics here. Tengu, hatch down, gets the 9 o'clock. He's worked so hard to kill this 9 o'clock base, and he finally got it. It's 108 to 88 supply. Larva's up, but he lost his newest source of income. How many times have I said those words, and how many times have they meant important things to you? They should mean a lot of things to you. 6 o'clock base is fine. These two bottom right bases are fine. Effectively, two base mining here from Tengu. He's got 10 minerals in the bank. Larva's got 90. We're not bragging about that. How many overlords have died today? A bajillion. Okay, Ling Lurker defending this 9 o'clock position. This is not the interest of Tengu at the moment, though. Tengu is moving south to this 6 o'clock. Ultra's 
blitzing their way in here to try to save the day. He scans and sees the Ultras and says, all right, I guess we won't go there then. Seems like a bad idea. Good. <sighs> this is insane. Yeah, this might be the best TVZ I've cast of the year, and I've cast some crazy TVZs already, man. If you just if you have not seen a good TVZ on the channel this year, go back, just look. Just go look through my catalog, youtube.com slash Falcon Palette, and just click on the videos list. It'll sort them for you chronologically. But seriously, hit the like button if you're enjoying this game, because I think both sides have a lot to cheer for here, both Zerg and Terran. And subscribe, gosh dang it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do it. I'm trying to get up to a hundred thousand subs, and I'm giving you content like this. This is you do not see games like this at ASL very often. Science vessels getting wiped out. This is a treat I am giving you today from RJB. Check him out. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. 120 to 101 supply. There's a lurker in here. Oh, there's a defiler too. Ready for a plague? I'm ready for a plague. There it is! Plague! Dude. I don't know. It's hard for me to take this away from Larva. And he plagues the science vessels next. And there's a ton of Ultras up here. Tengu's just sharking around. He's trying to find where on earth he can go. Where he can go to find some purchase here. The Scourge are out. The science vessels. Oh, they did get spotted. He tries to pull back. Two of the science vessels die. Ling flank attack doesn't get a lot done there. That's fine. That's fine. Counterattack of Ling's up to the top right here. Are there replacement tanks? Sort of. There's one. Yeah. 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 Oh, this base is not well defended at all. D Matrix, the Firebat. Send them in, boys. So this group may be almost a distraction. But what's going on here? Because, oh, there is a lurker here. He's dead, though. Never mind. Hydras alone are not going to stand against this much bio. <laughs> Marines. Siege tanks. Nine kills, three kills. This ultra going to die to tanks. This defiler going to die to tanks. Larva wants to save this base. He does send enough to save it. And the six o'clock base lives, but I think he might have just ended up sacking the nine o'clock a little bit. No. Ling's and Ultras are fast when they have their upgrades. They can respond. They can kind of be in two places at once a little bit here. And Larva wipes out both of the tanks that joined this party. Big, big gets there from Larva. The Ultras have less to worry about now that this is happening. <sighs> I feel like I haven't started or stopped being hyped for 25 minutes now, and that's probably the case. Oh, God. Drink of water. Here we go. I don't usually get a drink of water during a cast, but this requires it. Okay, Larva on two mining bases. Kind of on three if we count this one, which I think we should for the time being. Two mining bases from Tengu. Getting this base back I think would be worth it. I love how this Ultra Lichit has been parked under here for, I don't know, ten minutes now? Uh-oh. The Ling's swinging up to support Big Brother Ultra Lisk. Okay, well they chased him away. Land the base, Tengu. Continue to be active, Tengu. Do what you need to do, Tengu. Wake up. I think Tengu might have forgot that these guys exist, but look, it's 150 to 96 supply in favor of Larva. Science vessel count, not good, friends. It is, in fact, perhaps entirely true that it is a zero science vessel situation. We just made two. So, yeah. Science vessel count is bad. And if you're just <laughs> going to win this, either you need a million Zeech tanks or you need a bunch of science vessels. We just don't have those. At all. Look at this defiler. He's like, don't see me. Don't see me. Okay, the filer irradiated. Can he make it up here and get a dark swarm off before he dies? Absolutely, yes. It's a plague up, which was kind of dodged a little bit. Ah, Tengu's final stand up here. 
I don't know. Medics on the ramp. Science vessels watching with not enough energy for an irradiate. Fallen back, though, is Larva going for an easier target. This bottom right area, which is, I don't want to say undefended, but not looking good. Yeah, man. Tengu putting up one heck of a fight today. Never going to complain about a up-and-coming player giving an established player everything they can handle. But that's it. That's it. 130 to 61 supply. This base is dead. This base is barely mining. The 12 o'clock is gone. Larva has retaken the 9 o'clock and the 6 o'clock. He has persevered in the face of immense amounts of damage put upon him by Tengu today. But that's how you know Larva has the heart of a champion. But this Tengu person, let's go. This one of the greatest. GG! Larva gets the win. But Tengu. Oh, I did the thing again. Okay, we're going to watch this on a million times speed. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm almost speechless at that match. 2024 has been nothing but bangers, I want to say. If you like StarCraft and you're not subscribed to the channel and you haven't watched my stuff this last couple of months, what are you doing? These games have been astounding. Astounding. Yeah, end of the day, the way that Larva was barely, barely able to hold on. <sighs> Crazy. Just the number, like, the number of bases that have died today, the number of hatches that have gone down in particular is way too high. Tech's been sniped. Drops were so good from Tengu. He got so much value out of these drops today. And, in fairness, the Battle Cruiser Curse continues with this game. Making <laughs> BCs. Sometimes they got some value, sometimes they didn't. I don't know if there's a single BC that got nothing done, which is nice. We like to see that. But yeah, I mean, once Tengu kind of took his top half of the map here, and then Larva just had one extra base mining on him and a better worker count pretty much consistently throughout the second half of this game, it was just tough. And Larva's ability to defend this 9 o'clock base, which just went down, and the 6 o'clock base simultaneously with fastlings and fast ultras was just impressive to see attacking up a ramp is hard to do no matter who you are no matter who you're attacking and yeah just this is mining hard this is mine actually this is mining out you know what i didn't realize that this was mined out at the end of this game so that's even dang that's even closer even closer than i thought it was so gg absolutely Truly, 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 truly fantastic display there. That is a lot. <sighs> what a game. Something, this is maybe the best TVZ I've seen in 2024. If this had been light, still an epic game. The fact that Tangu put up this fight in a 40-minute TVZ is chef's kiss. Incredible stuff, man. What a game. All right, let's check out this final score. 310,000 points, 341,000 points today in favor of Tengu. Just kidding, in favor of Larva. I know how to read. I mean, they're smurf names, so like it's hard. But out producing the Terran, getting out killed by the Terran, but more out production there by the Zerg player. 20 to 11 building trays in favor of Tengu. And there you go, outspending the Terran player. He needed every bit of this outspend here. It was something like 23,000 resources today. In 40 minutes, that'll do, pig. That will do. So that's a win. And I mean, again, epic DEFCON 1 nonstop. My throat hurts. <laughs> this is such a good game. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Because guess what? That's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War remastered go ahead hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you saw what you heard today you can also catch me on twitter facebook patreon and twitch all at slash falcon paladin 
And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.